1916, James Henry Breasted, the first American to receive a PhD in Egyptology in 1894 from the University of Berlin, wrote a high school textbook entitled Ancient Times, A History of the Early World. And in this book, Breasted wrote about the amazing accomplishments of the ancient Egyptians, and he described them as brown-skinned men with dark hair. Now, what most people don't know is that this very book happened to be John D. Rockefeller Jr.'s favorite book. And for those of you who are not aware, Mr. Rockefeller happened to be the son of the wealthiest American of all time, John D. Rockefeller Sr. Now, because Rockefeller Jr. was so impressed with Mr. Breasted's work, Rockefeller decided to fund Breasted's research by giving him $1.5 million to establish the Oriental Institute at the University of Chicago. And again, for the people at home who are not aware, this quote unquote generous donation came with a caveat. You see, James Henry Breasted couldn't just take that man's money without paying him back. So a second edition of his book, Ancient Times, in 1935 was produced. And here, my friends, is where things get very interesting. Instead of keeping the majority of his book the same, this time, Breasted removed all references of the Egyptian people being brown-skinned. In addition to that, Breasted added a brand new chapter where he went on to state that the Egyptians were part of the great white race. Now, according to Breasted, the great white race stretched from Northern Europe to Northern Africa, and the black race begins just south of the second and third Nile cataracts in the region where Lower Nubia transitions to Upper Nubia. Breasted then proceeded to explain that the people of the great white race spread throughout the Northwest Quadrant at the end of the Paleolithic period. So as you all just saw, James Henry Breasted just got caught contradicting himself. In his initial work, Ancient Times, he clearly stated that the Egyptians were brown-skinned men with dark hair. And now in his new book, Ancient Times Volume 2, he stated that they were all white or part of the great white race. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to take the opportunity to stop the presentation for the people at home as something just transpired that I think it's very important that I point out. This is exactly why you can't trust everything you hear and read at home because the majority of these scholars and their opinions can be altered and bought out with the almighty dollar. Normally, I would move on and continue with the story as we have a lot to cover, but today, I'm gonna spend a little more time on James Henry Breasted as this man was considered by most to be the father of Egyptology. And for the people at home who don't know who this guy is, allow me to explain once more. One, James Henry Breasted was the first American to obtain a PhD in Egyptology at the University of Berlin. Two, he was the director of the Haskell Oriental Museum. Three, and in 1905, he was promoted to the full professor and held the first chair in Egyptology and Oriental history in the United States. So as you guys can all see here, this guy is a pretty big deal. And I personally think an extra amount of attention should be brought to this man as he was considered to be the head of Egyptology at the time. Like I had mentioned in the first edition of James Henry Breasted's book, Ancient Times in 1916, Breasted used illustrations of modern natives, including indigenous Australians, Native Americans, and Inuits, as ethnographic analogies for the state of prehistoric culture and technology. And according to Breasted, Tasmanians were cited as the first example of the lowest savage tribes, discovered by Europeans, therefore the closest living analogy to the conditions of life in the Old Stone Age. The next chapter then chooses to jump to the pre-diagnostic era in Egypt. According to Breasted, the people of Stone Age Europe, as he believed Europeans were still primitive and stuck in the Stone Ages, were unable to advance any further without outside influences, namely influence from the Near East. Before introducing Egypt, Breasted reminds his readers that civilization originated in the Orient with civilization being defined here as the ability to write, manipulate metal, form centralized governments, and engage in long distance commerce, AKA trade. Ancient Egypt, according to Breasted, was the first civilization to make the great leap forward by developing a complex writing system and centralized government. He then proceeds to remind his audience that Egyptian civilization carried on into the Christian age and thus into Europe. Now, why is this important and what relevance does this have with the story, you might ask? I'll tell you. As I just mentioned, Mr. Breasted spent an exceptional amount of time categorizing different groups of people in his first edition of his book in order to prove who was more primitive than who. 
Europeans were categorized as Europeans. Australians were categorized as Australians. Native Americans were categorized as Native Americans. Inuits were categorized as Inuits. Tasmanians were categorized as Tasmanians. And Egyptians were categorized as Egyptians. All of these groups, according to Breasted, were completely different. And according to him, some were more prehistoric than others. Now, if the Egyptians were part of the great white race, like he stated in his second book, why would he say in his first book that Europeans and Europe could not have advanced any further without outside influences, namely Egyptians? And again, if Egypt was a part of the great white race, like he stated, Breasted wouldn't have called them an outside influence. Now, would he? So which one is it, Mr. Breasted? Are Egyptians black or are they part of the great white race? Do you not think that people here are reading your book? Because I'm reading your book, partner. I've read the book twice, the first edition and the second edition. So let's get that on the wax right now. Are they part of the white race or are they part of the Egyptian black race? I'm gonna go with the second and say that the Egyptians were black because that was before Mr. Breasted took a bribe from John D. Rockefeller Jr. and changed his story. And you know what's crazy about all of this? If we were in a school, this would be the textbook definition of academic dishonesty. And James Henry Breasted is supposed to be the father of Egyptology. This guy is the father of Egyptology, yet we caught his ass in two lies today. 